Hello, welcome back to another Jukum video from the Jukum Cinematic Universe. Okay, so we're going to be talking about every character in the game and how to punish certain tools they may have. Now, this is going to be talking about all of their tools, just two or three notable ones for each character, which is probably still going to make this video very long, so I just want to get right into it. This can be talking about various like specific moves, going over specific scenarios or traits of things, and I think that last point actually fits perfectly for who we're going to be talking about first, and that is Aegislash. Okay, so going first with Aegis Slash, the first thing I want to really talk about is this thing. You all know it, it's his half mode shield form. So, what can make this move very difficult is the fact that he's always in a counter state. Now, what can you really do to deal with being in counter state? Obviously, you can go, go in for a grab. Problem is, he can do any sort of attacks and that will beat it out. Some of them are still counter based. I think this one's still counter based, not an attack based, so you can grab that. But most of the time, at least in field phase, they'll go for something like a homing attack if they think you're going to grab. Uh, you can bait it out pretty well with a, uh, certain characters and their counterattacks. So for example, if you're like right in his face and you see a counterattack, Aegis Slashes will most of the time want to go for something like Sacred Sword because it's very fast and has a lot of hits. Characters with faster dashes or longer lasting dashes can do stuff like this to bait it out and keep charging. So they can cancel one dash into the next one and that refreshes your uh, counterattack armor, obviously. Of course, if you have longer charge time for your counterattack, that means you also have more armor. So if they miss time it, then you'll start to charge through. Now, another great option is to simply stay above them and be able to punish them right as soon as they are finished with a landing attack. Now, the Aegis Slash does have a move for anti airs like this, but it is very linear. It has this move. It does hit on the ground, but not very useful for on the ground hits. You want to aim it like that, and you see a giant blind spot over him. You want to jump directly over him. And certain characters can even punish him even when he is in counter state in situations like this. While characters with high air mobility will be able to dodge this back Y, uh, very well, uh, certain characters can still do it, like even uh, Empoleon right here will be able to do so. And he also has the factor of, like I said, having a move that can pierce even when in the air. Steel Wing is a great example of that. Some moves you could just have that pierce on the ground too, but being in the air is very useful because you don't have to deal with a very fast move like Sacred Sword. Obviously, fully charged counterattacks also pierce, so if they mess up and think you're going to do a dash of some sort and don't Sacred Sword or they Sacred Sword late, you'll still pierce through it. Now the other weird option they can do in this situation is doing Flash Cannon to try to pierce. That said, Flash Cannon still loses the jump-ins. So it all depends on if you want to risk it. Oh wait, I actually, wow, <laughs> I timed that perfectly actually. But it all depends. I honestly, I honestly just do the counter. <laughs> no, but it can beat it out a few times in situations like that. And that can be very, very difficult. But as I was trying to say, it's also kind of reactable a little bit. And also jumpable as soon as the counter armor ends and you can finish them off with a grounded attack or aerial attack. The gist kind of is, if you're up close to Aegis Slash, Aegis Slash really wants to go in shield mode into blade mode right away to get the buff. In field face, it's a lot more easier to go into shield mode because you start far away and it's a lot finer to be in it because you have better projectiles in comparison to being in this phase where your only real moves are these and you don't really see them used often. This is also something he has in dual phase, but jumping above him is still really good in this phase. He doesn't have his great 8Y like he does in this one. The only really good move in dual phase, from what I've seen, are Sacred Sword and Flash Can, and sometimes a stun, uh, Shadow Sneak, but that's only on Oki purposes, so it doesn't really matter. You're still gonna have to be forced to block it. But other than that, Aegis Slash really wants to go from this form to this form in dual phase. In field phase, he can be a little easier, but the weakness is being in front of him and forcing him to make a decision based on baiting stuff out with counterattacks or jump-ins, like I said. The last thing you can do from far away to be eat out uh, shield mode and actually can prevent Aegis Slashes from even going into it in the first place is support certain supports and probably also certain attacks too, like Chandler's laser for in fact, because that these all can pierce. Certain ones can pierce and force Aegis Slash to be in a sticky situation because if he goes into this and you go, hey, Lapras, Lapras is a great perfect example for this, you can get a big punish like that. And momentum is obviously going to be in your favor in that point. Now, the weird thing here is that Aegis Slash also has a Ghost Dash. He can go through certain things. I think for Chandler, he can go through it all. And I think he could be relatively safe. I'm not too sure how long Chandler's lasts. But it, for Lapras' case, because it's a situation that always happens to me. Is that something like that will happen? They'll go through the Lapras, but... As you can see, not that close, it's just kind of weird how I had to test it, but uh, even from far away, characters can shoot their projectiles at him and hit him in his active frames. Or if you're a faster character, you could literally just homing attack him. And of course, if you're up close like there, you could just do any option and it could be very devastating for his health considering he's a 5'10 character. Not in height. <laughs> now that was just a long thing, I'm giving like multiple examples of how to counter certain moves, but in this case, this one's going to be a little more simple. Uh, for this move, Flash Can, 
A lot of times, once they land the first one, they'll want to go for another on Oki and you're going to be forced to block it. In this state, some characters, not every character, can be able to jump it. Now, that's not a true punish. Uh, certain characters, like Septile, would probably be able to punish. It depends on the distance, too. Like, if you're from far, you're more likely not to be able to do it. It doesn't really matter because the beam all appears at once, so it's not uh, really a thing that, like, it's distance space too. Luckily, <laughs> and this also works from going in the field of dual phase, but I'm not going to set that up because I'm lazy. <laughs> Just trust me on that. Also, certain characters, I think it's Suicune and Brakeson, don't actually get knocked down from uh, Flash Can. So if they also attempt that, you're even more, like, technically, like, plus if they decide to go for it again, and you're more likely to punish them. So like I mentioned, this is used for chip damage because especially it pierces, as I talked about in just a general shield mode. And then you can do stuff like this and be able to punish him, do a lot of damage to him. That said, this is something if your opponent realizes you can do, they're probably not going to be doing it. They might try doing it a few times against someone like Empoleon because they don't get the guaranteed punish. But even then, you'd still get the momentum with Empoleon because then he could do something like JY into Aqua Jet. And other characters have their own variations of like how they can gain their own advantage. Usually characters with better jumps will be able to avoid the second one. Alright, now we're talking about the big boy, the pay-to-lose character in this game, <laughs> is Blastoise. One of the moves Blastoise likes using most in this game is... Not this one, this one. Uh, Rapid Spin. Now, he doesn't need to be in this, obviously. That's just his faster variation, because fun fact, that gets faster if you're already in shell stance. But the base one is very reactable with all the wind-up and counter armor. I'm pretty sure even this one you'd be able to uh, react to at least a, a safe distance. And you are able to counter that with a counter attack of your own. It does have a lot of hits though, so it can be out your attacks really quickly, even if you're slightly off. So it's just good to get a timing for it and be able to punish him. Being patient against Blastoise and Field Face can do numbers. It'd be kind of weird to play around admittedly because Field Face is all around using projectiles. And this move will obviously delete the projectiles and get him in. But that's toward the trade-off. Being patient can net you a lot of reward well not a lot but you can win you the phase and you can get more uh, meter and other advantage but besides that you would think okay blastoise can just like bait out how patient you are and use your, his own projectiles a lot of projectiles are pretty slow in fact some of them like even the faster ones his forward wise a big button and it's very good but in close distances it is very punishable for farther distances it's safe but from those farther distances it wouldn't make sense for them to do rapid spin usually it's from mid range to close range you should probably look out for it because it does have counter armor frame one so situations like this can happen probably better to stay out of his grab range too so he can't mix you up with that too if you do end up blocking though he does have a plenty of follow-ups he can do that makes it so he's not always in a bad position that said it's still probably in your favor you can do counter attacks to be safe at all times because his other options don't really he doesn't have a piercing option like empoleon does with aqua jet with rock smash he can do another one of uh, rapid spins which are faster and can beat it out but as you can see it doesn't really launch them unless it's on crit so it's still a situation where he's just like kind of just standing there or whatever he doesn't always have to go into his shell fortress stance i think it's punishable on block if it is though but that's kind of can be hard to react to either way doing something like a counter and reacting to the situation at least for faster characters who have better counter attacks or better dashes are able to be safer here jumping can beat plenty of the options but can lose that headbutt move i showed you uh blastoise really won't be using this move because it's more so of like a projectile tool you they want to use from afar for doing something like this so you don't really have to worry too much about that. You could jump that too anyway. The main two are cancel and this. Now, of course, and be besides the another rapid spin. Those are basically the three options. Those are just the two other options. Oh, and sorry, I almost forgot. This is another type of cancel where you can move away. And if he moves away, not the worst position. He's just resetting neutral. Of course, this is all if they're blocking. So it means if he does do that, he's very, very minus and can be punished very easily for probably the entire cast. <laughs> Now, of course, Blastoise being one of the not as good characters in this game, even if he is pretty cool, does have a weakness in the fact that he wants to be kind of a rushdown zoner, sort of like Empoleon, but he's very bulky, very slow. His projectiles match that, as I mentioned. They are very slow, but I want to focus mainly on dual face for this. Now, with Water Gun, he has three different follow-ups. All these follow-ups are very slow. This is the fastest one, I think, for Aura Sphere. Now, the problem is, our other characters with strong projectiles are probably most likely going to be able to beat him out. Like Gardevoirs. So many characters have tools that can beat stuff out like this. Dark Pulse is meant to be a move that you can't delete or pierce. Or, sorry, counterattack because it does pierce. Like so. 
And then Dragon Pulse can be used to cover jump-ins, but it's still a very, very risky thing. And he also he also has this, actually. Aura Sphere Upward is a very good thing. Sometimes they are very slow, though, and you'll still be able to punish him by landing. Uh, Gyarvar isn't a great example because her jumps are pretty slow. But if you're fighting someone like Sceptile or Mewtwo, you would be able to attack after jumping the first uh, Water Gun. This is very slow, very reactable, and usually at the di you'd want to do it at a distance like this. They have fast jumps, they'll be able to jump over in time, and perhaps if the Blastoise isn't able to react properly because they want to focus on the grounded opponent that they see, they'll be getting punished from the opponent's air attacks. Now another quirk Water Gun has is that it can be cancelled into this, as I showed before. Faster jumps will still be able to catch this occasionally. This is a safer option you could do because you can go right into Rapid Spin and that'll be out the attack. But it is still very awkward. I do feel just sometimes it is not in his favor if you do play around it. Other zoners will be able to beat out his projectiles, and characters who are more movement-based are going to be able to hit him before he can do his follow-up, or just straight up hit or delete the projectile like Empoleon can. I mentioned my character a lot, but that's just because this is from personal experience dealing with these characters. So other characters can deal with it too in a lot of ways. I know Brixton has light screens, so that's another example. Other projectile all deletion moves are include something like uh, Karate Chop for Machamp, but those are just various ways. Dark Pulse beats them all, but you're not going to have a foolproof way of doing it, but it is very heavily in your favor, in my opinion, at the very least. It all depends on the character. And that is an example of what I mean by this. I've had several situations where a Blastoise will try to do this, and then as Empoleon, just do something like that. Now, I know I've been kind of trashing it, but it is still one of his best moves, just because it can be very versatile. But these are just kind of like the different ways that you can play around it. You can play around with jumps. It's kind of like an Empoleon situation, which I'll mention in a bit, where he does have the options to beat other things opponents are trying to do to beat out his option. But it's kind of like a one in something chance of doing it. And if you react accordingly, you can still get around it. But that is just something if you react quick enough to be able to beat that move out. Hopefully that made all sense. I said, like, that move and blah, uh, other stuff a lot million times, but you know what I mean. If you hit the water gun before it, you'll be able to hit him. Hitting does damage. Alright, this is more of a disclaimer to start off with Blaziken here, because I've seen this happen plenty of times. I guess Blaziken's burst mode. They'll do something like this. And then they'll get hit by the attack because they extend their hurt box trying to attack him. But then they get hit by the giant pillar. Just be careful. That's all I can really say. It's just like... Wait for him to do that or something. Like, even if it means getting his speed buff, just be very careful. Or, like, way before the fire pillar. Okay, now that I've got that over the way, because I just seem to happen too much, and I need to let everyone know so it doesn't happen to you. <laughs> uh, it never happened to me, personally. Uh, Wits Blaze again. You probably know one of his most used moves is this. Blaze kicks in can be in, into other blaze kicks or flare blitz at the end there. Now, this is kind of a mix-up. But a lot of the time it could be in his favor depending on the character. Now, it's very good to know your option for how to deal with this. Being able to react and being that option out with a certain move that can be every option is very useful. That has red armor, but not for too long. It can be very hard to tell the difference because you can't just edge here. I try to use my AY because it's not like a frame one thing. You can do it for this move though. Hopefully you wouldn't be fast enough to just hit the red armor. <laughs> but yeah, that's just how it goes. Other characters have their own options besides just like a frame one anti-air like Leaf Storm is. That's how that worked. Uh, I think Suicune, I forget if Aurora Beam is frame one. That might be able to work. But other characters have like ghost dashes. If you're in Badger's Rising, he may be able to four dash or do his phantom like release. I think it's release Y to avoid it. Shandor can use her own 8Y to be able to beat it out. And of course does have minimize and her ghost dashes as well. And then some characters don't have guaranteed ways to do it. This is one I know from personal experience because I actually labbed it before. For, and there's probably plenty of other ways to do it with other characters that are kind of guaranteed but not always guaranteed. What I mean by this is that Blazekins like to do it so that it's always enhanced. They are enhanced blaze kicks or they're enhanced flare blitz. They don't want to do unenhanced most of the time just because this is weak and this is strong but punishable on block unlike the other one. This one will, for Empoleon beats out all the options except for this one as you can see here very quick can beat him out but the C the risk reward here is that Blaziken will probably never do that because it is punish one block maybe they will do it after you do it a few times but there's plenty of situations where Empoleon could do that to beat it out and it's a very common move for him to use so it's more likely that you'll be able to react in time and do 4x and if they don't even know if there is a way to do it, they'll most likely just not do Blaze Kicks as often. So many characters have their own ways of dealing with it, whether it's guaranteed or almost guaranteed like Empoleon's. Very useful to know for your own character. 
because this can be very oppressive to deal with. With all that said, for just a general advice, not punishable, but enhanced flurry blitz is still minus eight, so you can do that to take your turn or get out of the corner if you are being pressured there. Now, when it comes to field face Blaziken, uh, Blaziken likes to jump in field face sometimes because it has moves like that. You can perfect block that, so that's very good, but it can be charged too, so it can mess up your timing. If they do it from high above, I think it can be punished if it's just the normal kick, but the charged one is a little bit safer if I recall, but either way, by the way, you should be blocking the uncharged kick and be trying to perfect block in the fully charged one. Very rarely will they go for like a half charge like this to mess up your timing. Even then, you could try going for like maybe two homing blocks to try to perfect block it because situations like that against single hit moves are very, very good to go for just because you can get a lot of momentum off of it. Other than that, Blaziken has very good air moves like this, but it's always going to be patient against those two. It's the reason with GX is that it's just reactable if he's charging it. But the move I wanted to talk about the most here is this move. This move has brought many, many uh, failings for characters in this game. And by characters, I mean players, including myself. It's really a niche move, because it's still sticking around as you see there, but it's actually, it's only a one-hit move. I'm not going to be able to get punished for that, because it's only the one hitbox, so like, I've seen many people be afraid of like, oh, the visual effect didn't go away, that means there's still a hitbox there. No, it's just gone away. Never fall for that. What can be difficult about this move, though, is that Blaziken can do stuff like this. If you block that, I think that's also very punishable. <laughs> Yeah, like, very punishable. And then the one last option for this move is doing this kick. And you can just do a side, side wide like this in the air to do it right away. I think this is also punishable. So if you see him in the air, patience is key. And reacting to the situation is very good. I know this video is talking about how to punish every character in Pokémon, but some situations are just kind of hard and it's just better to know how to deal with it a little better than it's just, just go for the straight up punish. Alright, breaks in time. Breaks in has a lot of good moves and well, I could go on and on about this, but I really just want to talk about the main two. First one I want to talk about is Flame Charge. To be more precise, I want to talk about Enhanced Flame Charge. Because, as you can see, that's a pretty big move and well, it's very hard to deal with on block because you can't really press a button. Uh, she did the little sunny day dance, but she'd be able to block that, and if a good Brixen noticed that you were CAing and were about to let go, she could even do her own counterattack, or if you were going to charge it, she could grab, or just jump out of the way. Usually, you'd want to aim for your counterattack on this part. Now, that one didn't crit, but actually, if you do it a bit early enough, you should be able to get a crit on Brixen. Uh, this is a slower counterattack, too. Usually, faster counterattacks, like set tiles, would be able to punish her, but like... Yeah, see, that's a crit right there, and that was still a little bit, like, early for what it was. When you're especially fighting a Bursted Breaks in, they'll want to go for the Slam Charge for the pressure I mentioned earlier, because also another good option they could do is if you do counter the Light Screen, uh, they could do a Burst Attack on Reaction to you because they're just that quick, or if you decide to press a button, you're going to get crit from Light Screen and they get a full combo. It's a very sticky situation to be in, but because of that, they're going to be aiming for that a lot. So you could try to get a Counter Attack off that. Sometimes you can't really react to it if they're doing it up in your face, which is the case for a certain thing they like doing a lot too, which is also doing it off of Adex. They also have a lot of mix-ups they can do, like, draw back, but a lot of the time they'll like to do this, and then do the Light Screen shenanigans. Which, that did a lot of damage even when it was just all that nonsense. Okay, well, this character's kind of dumb. From a distance, it gets a lot easier to react to. Though, also, I forgot to mention it, it may also be height-dependent. That was pretty low to the ground. Off of Adex in particular, I think this will always be in a situation where you can punish her with something like a uh, counterattack. Okay, maybe not for slower characters, but at least for the faster characters, they should be able to punish at that height. But at the same time, if you have a fast CADC and you try to cancel it into a dash grab, so I guess a perfect example would be Weavile, who has a very slow CA, but has a very quick dash cancel out of it, he would be able to probably punish with a grab, or they would at least not expect it a lot of the time, because they'd want to block and, like, protect themselves from the counterattack. But yeah, those are various ways you can try to play around her flame charge. Like, especially if it's all, like, that high, you're definitely going to be able to get your counterattack even for slower characters a little more easily. But at the same time, it's still very hard to deal with, and it is a reason why it's still a very good pressure tool for her to do. But generally, it can be played around, and there's been several times where I have punished Breaksons who try to just do this randomly, especially with Empoleon, and I get a full combo. <laughs> the other annoying move I want to talk about is this move, the two-parter of that Flame Charge shenanigans I told you about. Light screen over here. Uh, it deletes projectiles, frame one, gives her a slight counter armor two, I'm not sure for how long, probably only like one frame, but... The main draw for this is that she has no point in where she cannot get hit by projectiles. She could just keep spamming this from a full distance, and she would totally be fine from any projectiles at all. Yeah, see, like, even though the light screen is clearly gone there, she's just still like, no, I'm immune to it for some freaking reason. Luckily, there are two options you can do to try to mix your projectiles up to make sure she can't just spam it from a distance. One option that I'll show her here, which is another reason why I picked Empoleon, is sometimes I like doing something like this. 
that was a true punish as well because I don't think she had any time to put up her block and I was like at the very tail end of it, but at the same time, it doesn't really matter. What matters here is that I was able to do a physical hit in between the first hits. That was a bad example. But I was able to do my Aqua Jet attack while following up my projectiles. So she would be like, oh, I'm baited into doing light screen to delete those projectiles. And then I punish her for it. There's a few other characters I can think of who have projectiles where they can still get in a bit. Like, I think the main one is uh, Mewtwo Psycho Cut. Not really too sure how often they would do light screen when they can duck it. But that is another great example of it. Septile with his traps could also probably do it too if he, they were trying to delete it from far away. And then he just like dashes up and leaf blades them or something. Another thing you can do to bait it out is having a character who likes to use Using projectiles so like blasto is here he's like oh no i can't do water gun i can't do into dragon pulse i can't do into aura sphere well you can do something that can pierce the light screen because it can't delete it something like dark pulse that pierces it can't be deleted other characters have their own tools too like gardevoir has her 2x and chandler's like I guess Chandler doesn't really have to deal with it because all her projectiles pierce anyway, except for like flame burst before it lands. I'm being very nerdy about this. But yes, characters who like to shoot projectiles and Jay's just like, I'm just going to ignore neutral. You could just be like, no, bait, bait it out, punish it with a piercing projectile. And then if you're a Blake Blastoise and want to get in a bit, then you could just be like, time to get in. So that's just since Brakeson can kind of make Blastoise her plaything a lot of the time just by keeping him away or up close pressure too. Honestly, that matchup is just kind of bad for Blastoise, but in this instance, he does have an edge if he can try to bait it out. And of course, like the characters I mentioned before. You could also try sometimes, if you really are thinking it, use the support that will also pierce her light screen. So like, that's also hits far away. Maybe not a projectile, but something like Lapras. Maybe even Mega Rayquaza. Probably not Mega Rayquaza. I think she could delete Amalga, because I know Impulion can delete Amalga, so definitely not Amalga. <laughs> but hey, Bra Lapras can at least get you in a lot easier if you want to do that and stop avoiding her light screen shenanigans altogether, so that is good to keep in mind. And then one final minor thing for this character is that she obviously likes using supports a lot, because she has the dumb sunny day, and she could just increase her support gauge when she just hits the opponent. Well, it's always good to keep in mind if you're like not too comfortable in the matchup or you have a bad matchup, like if you're playing someone like Blastoise, you might be a good idea to try to counterpick her support. Now, she does build up a lot quicker, but this can get you out of situations where you might need it. Like, for example, I've seen Breaksons lately, been trying to use Dragonite for a lot of shield break shenanigans or at least a lot of chip damage. Using something like Pachirisu can help a lot with that. In fact, if you're in that situation, it doesn't even matter if she tries to Oki her Dragonite. If you do Pachirisu on frame one, uh, you'll be immune to everything from the meteors that strike down with Dragonite, and you could even punish her sometimes if she doesn't like it late enough. Of course, a lot of the way she's going to be using supports is in combos or shield pressure. Sometimes with those shield pressure shenanigans, like if she's having a Malga, characters like Empoleon or Breakson with their defog and light screen tools respectively are able to delete a Malga while attacking it because she's still in that like little posing state as a Malga shoots out. But normally you'd have to block it and she would just totally be fine and be plus on block. It all depends on if they actually forget about the Amalga stuff. So, you know, if you just want to take advantage of that when you think they get the chance, then sure, go for it. Off to Chandelier. Now, this one may be useful for a lot of people who are struggling with zoners. Uh, when it comes to this air beam, it is full screen. If she charges it, it is pierceable. It does have a weakness, though. It is a high. So, you can duck it. Ugh, I don't like that noise he makes. But yes, it is like this, and many characters, even from far away, are able to punish her because of this. I know, for example, what I do a lot, and I could have used him, but I didn't want to for the sake of character variety, uh, is Apollon can do his 2x slide and go under him and punish her from full screen. Some characters have low stances like this, that avoid the highs, that can move around. And they'll be able to punish her. Gengar's is one example. And of course, other characters with low stances, like I guess in a Chandelure Ditto, if they low stance, they can do their own projectiles and hit her before she lands and damage her that way. It's a very simple thing, and it's nice to know a very simple thing like this to be able to punish a character like her because she can be very annoying when it comes to that move if she if you're already in the air. That's a very difficult situation to be in. And in that situation, I would just recommend trying to do your best to stay in the air above the beam or try to get down as soon as possible if she's like higher up into the air doing the beam. And for those who are like, oh, I finally got in against the chandelier. There will possibly be no reason that she can reverse the situation and decline all of my hard work I've done thus far wrong. She has smog. Smog is very stupid. You see its counter frames. You see it gives a defense debuff. It's a reverse option. You see the air tech. You're suddenly in mid screen and then she can zone you again. And then it's a defense debuff, of course, so her moves do more damage. This move sucks. <laughs> it is technically punishable on block, but the pushback even on block is so far that most characters aren't able to do it. Like, for example, Lucario can't do it with his 2-Y, but he can do it with his Bone Rush. 
That was a punish. It's very stupid how far it pushes you back to where most characters can't do it. And kind of just makes it like if it was a DP like Lucario. It's like if his E speed was just like, by the way, I you can just block. It pushes you back so far. Full screen. I'm able to block. Honestly, you could probably punish Lucario from full screen even after E speed like that. Now, how do you deal with this move then? Well, first off, you could try baiting it because you can jump it fairly easily. Because Chandler being a... Squishy character, squishy chandelier character. Uh, she has trouble doing stuff like that. Another way you could beat it is through either timing your moves right or having long, long lasting moves, like for example, the Karya 6X. Another thing that makes this move very annoying is hearing her go like 5 million times in a row. While having two other things you can use to reverse the situation, this is the most common one. And there's many different character specific ways they can avoid this if possible. For example, someone with a jump cancel like Mewtwo. We'll be able to do stuff like that and jump over it after hitting their block. This is mainly just a thing you'll find on Oki or as soon as you get in against him. And if you think it's too obvious, you can go for a grab. Problem is, though, sometimes Chandlers will want to do something like big, like overheat. This is a red armor move, so that does mean you can pierce it at like smog, but it can be very difficult. It is a lot slower, though. So it's easier to bait out. It does leave for debuff, too, so if you do end up just blocking it, don't get pushed as far, and she's in a state like that, and she can only, can't do it again. That said, Smog, like I said, the most reliable. She doesn't get any downsides to it besides being minus on block. And that is another small thing, uh, quite literally. Uh, she has minimized, which... Did you guys know this move in Wii U couldn't be grabbed? But in this game, it can be grabbed. Like, you might be used to just being able to grab it here, but in this move, this move is just completely invincible. And you can cancel into plenty of things, including burst attack in burst mode. There's another punch I want to show that's just very good and... The situation means you should know this when it comes up ever. Uh, <laughs> well, he can punish with this. This is frame 11. So yeah, that's great. It is spacing reliant, and even for this first attack, it doesn't go full screen right away. Uh, it does take a little bit of time to just go across. So there are situations where if uh, she does uh, smog from far away and you get pushed back further away, you won't be able to punish it. Same goes for something like Lucario's Bone Rush I mentioned earlier. Still makes it a very annoying move, but knowing how to counter it in ways like jumping over it or baiting it out, very useful. You'll be seeing a lot of baiting throughout the rest of this video and like patience and stuff. Because dealing with those moves are very common moves for most of the cast, and being able to be patient and not just throw your face into it is very, very good to take note of. For the lad Charizard over here, one of the moves you will see a lot is this move, Fire Punch. It is a very armor-based move, but it is very punishable. If they don't press anything. The thing with this move, though, is that it can be cancelled into a flight stance. Oh, before and after. I actually did before because I'm a masher. <laughs> and the move you'll commonly see right after as they're in this flight stance is using Flare Blitz. Faster moves. Uh, okay, maybe Pikachu was a bad example. <laughs> actually, wait, no, it's not. Okay, it was a bad example. <laughs> nah, just kidding. You thought you would never see Pikachu back while be used practically. Uh, but yes, it, faster moves are able to beat it out. Many of his options. He's, this is, Flare Blitz isn't the only option. What is the most common option you will see? He has Dragon Claw here. And that was him trying to block there. So that was a guaranteed way of doing it. Other characters will have their own ways of doing it. Sceptile does forward Y. Napoleon will want to do back Y or Aqua Jet. It's just very, very punishable. And not being afraid of like what the next move is going to be. Especially Flare Blitz. Because Flare Blitz looks like the big move. And it will, does do a lot of damage. But you can be able to hit him out of it before that. So just find an option that can beat out all these options. Which is basically just a fast move. Fire Punch kind of bad, not going to lie. And Dual Face, same logic goes here. Except every option could also be anti -aired, <laughs> Because that's where the actual anti are from. But then you can also just do stuff like that that's also really quick. It's very... Yeah, it's not, a, it's not the best move. But it is a move that they like to use. Just because the positives are still positives. And it's a frame one counter armor. Now the other one. The one where you're dealing with Charizard looming over your head in his devastating burst mode. Because he will just fly at you like this sometimes. And if you press a button, don't press a button. Unless you're in a specific situation. If you want to fight Mega Charizard X... Sometimes it's good, at least when he's very high into the air, to just come at him. Just come at them like this when they're very high up, because you get to put, put in a situation where the only option they really have to do is use burst or do nothing. They can do certain attacks, but the main thing why you'd want to do something like this is to mix them up, and if they do decide to press a button, uh, Pikachu was a bad example like this, you could try hitting them out the air with a move with a lot of hits. 
this varies character to character. Probably not recommend for someone like Pikachu unless it's a situation like that where they're right in front of you. Luckily, his JY is a heavy, but other characters are better off than others. You want to be careful though because he can burst attack if they are expecting you, or as you could probably have seen when I tried doing JY earlier, he can shift his momentum very, very back and forth, and there's been situations where I've been baited. But hey, if you don't want to get worried about dealing with the looming threat of burst attack, you can do that, and if they end up doing their burst as you're blocking, then the threat is over because the main reason this mode is scary is because of the threat of burst. You don't want to press a button on the ground and then decide to jump and then they hit you with a burst attack on reaction. You want to be able to do this and worst case scenario, if they do jump, you may be able to uh, block in time. Always be careful that they could do something like JY because that is a big move, but it does have a little bit of startup. So it's better to be safe to just walk and block a little bit. And also be careful if they do decide to land on the ground, you can probably react, especially if you're high up, which is why I say probably do it better if you are high up into, if he's high up into the air, because if he does that, it's a while. He can't cancel this into, oh wait, he can't cancel it into a glide, I thought he could. Huh, I guess he can't. But if he does land on the ground, then you can be able to see that he might be trying to go for something like Seismic Toss. Or just any other grab. But probably Seismic Toss, because he could do this. <laughs> so all in all, it's a very risky maneuver to be doing, but... I've done it a lot and it's worked out for me a lot. All depends on the character. If you're a Napoleon main, totally do it. If you're a Sceptile main, don't do it. <laughs> Other good characters who would probably like to do it sometimes that are probably like Mewtwo, but Mewtwo's also pretty tall, so that could be very awkward. <laughs> all right, for the literal embodiment of a Mimer kid, you're gonna be fighting Krogon again. As we all know, we're gonna be fighting this move. This is the entire character. Uh, this move, you could probably tell, you're gonna get tornadoes, you're gonna get boulders and stuff. It can be very annoying, and I'm going to be very annoyed trying to get the right stuff for this video. <laughs> but as we all know, this move can be very annoying, especially in Field Phase, where it does have homing properties. Like, look at this boulder. It literally can go around me. Actually, I guess it does go off eventually. But the thing oh, people seem to forget sometimes is that when you do a side dash, stuff loses its homing properties. This also works with the boulder, but I don't know if it'll do it or not. But <laughs> it does work like that, and that is a very common thing people need to be doing more, in my opinion. At least I feel people don't do it as much. Is that you could just do this... And you don't have every opportunity to do it. Like, if it lands directly on you, it's understandable if you don't do it. In situations like this, where you're far away and he's trying to spam it, especially in burst mode, it's always good to keep in mind that you could just uh, jump over it. Or not, sorry, dash to the side of it. Another thing about this move is that if you are up close, you will most, like, if you just go in sometimes, like, if you conveniently, this probably isn't going to be something you mean to do a lot of the time. Because he can, like, angle to change the move, like, if he wants to do it right in front of him. But if you're, like, in mid-range and then you're suddenly in, in front of him, you can try to punch him in some way, shape, or form. And then for the last thing, honestly, this is just a general tip thing. When you see a Krogunk go into burst mode, most people would be like, I don't want to be near the burst mode. Being fighting someone who's in burst mode is kind of scary. I would agree. Too bad it's Krogunk, and Krogunk is kind of meh, <laughs> to say the least, because what he relies on is using this to get a lot of chip damage after some point. Having Rage also helps with the RNG, as I mentioned in my Krogunk video, but because of that, he wants to be far away. So if you just keep up the pressure on him as he's in his burst mode, he can't really have the room to do it. Like, he can do this, but he needs the room to do it, so you have to keep pressuring him. A crucial thing people mess up is that, because they like to run away. It makes sense for zoners, because they do have beams, and they could possibly hit Krogunk uh, before he does it, like if it's Chandler's air laser. But against someone who's like Sceptile, I guess, for example, because we're fighting against him, he wants to get in as fast as possible in burst mode. And he does have all the moves he needs to pressure him. Especially if he does have his own burst mode, then he can use his light moves too. So, you always want to be kind of close to him if you are someone who has to rush down. And even someone who, I don't know, like, if Gardevoir would want to be close to him too. Because he just crumbles from pressure a lot. Like, even even with Poison Jabs, yeah, like, it's a red move, but it's a bad red move. You can block it on it, and you can, there's plenty of ways. It's just slow. So, he doesn't have that going for him. The other thing that can be very difficult, though, is that if he is in the air, he can do this. But if you try to air-to-air -to -air him in, like, any situation because of the pressure, he can also just do his burst attack because it's frame one and vulnerable in the air. So, that's very awkward. But generally, you just want to be close to him. His RNG in general can be easily played around. Not just because, like I said, this can be blocked. But even when he has the buffs on him, you know the situation you want to be in. So, for example... Uh, if you have two debuffs on you, oh, sorry, if he has two buffs on himself, he's obviously going to be thinking, oh, I want to go for a grab a lot. So it may be good in these situations to think about, oh, do I want to 
get grabbed because if he does do a grab like this, you're going to be eating a lot of damage. This is actually something I forgot to mention in my Krogan video because I'm a fraud. Uh, he does a million damage from that. Same goes for stuff like Venoshock. If you want to uh, deal with Venoshock, uh, you can't. <laughs> you have to stay still. He's going to be doing a lot of chip damage on you unless you can jump very high to avoid it. Otherwise, you're going to be eating a million chip and this pierces. So it's always just good to be able to take the hit or just jump and get the timing of it. And it also shield breaks. Actually, that's kind of busted. <laughs> a really stupid move, honestly. So yeah, this move is hard to play around than something like Poison Jab or even Grab, but it's always something to keep in mind. Of course, when he has double buffs too, he has the Miguel Punch as well, but like, that, this move is very slow to, to the point where you don't need to worry about it, really. Like, it's it's fine. <laughs> and then lastly, when it comes to uh, the buff shenanigans, uh, when you have any buff on you, uh, buffs or one or two, he gets enhanced for his move Thief, which can steal it too. So that can be very annoying to deal with. Uh, too bad it is a low, and I think it's reactable. Not re I, okay. I'm not sure about reactable, but it is definitely a low. So being in the air in situations like this, like preemptively, this is all like kind of like preemptive stuff. Like if you're fighting Venoshock, you might want to be in the air to avoid it or jump to be. Actually, I just realized jumping kind of beats the grab, the poison jab, the thief. The <laughs> just be in the air all the time, I guess. If you do end up having any sort of buff being stuffed shenanigans or debuffing shenanigans with crow gunk it's very weird all right dark cry is up next this character can be very awkward just because he has counter moves like nasty plot where he can do it after shooting projectiles so even if you do end up trying to hit him he can just go into nasty plot which can be very weird the solution to this is you might want to pick a support that can delete projectiles like whimsicott or pachirisu i mainly go for whimsicott because uh, it sticks around longer longer and can go in between phases uh so even if he does stuff like this uh, you will be able to just go through it, and depending on the character, you will be able to punish him. Like, if you time it right. This could also help in Bad Dreams Rising, if you are on knockdown, and he tries to do something like a 2Y, or anything on your wake up, or like, oh, especially this move, this move I do a lot, it's 2X, because Whimsicott has frame 1 armor on startup. So you armor through the first hit, which is a physical hit, and then Whimsicott will get rid of all the projectile hits, which are these little rift thingy with triggers. And the other solution to this Fighting Darkrai in general, if you don't like being in Vagina's Rising and Wimsicott God doesn't really help you uh, prevent it anyway, uh, you might want to consider using Celebi. Celebi, for those who don't know, shifts the face. Doesn't do any damage, but shifts the face. Has a lot of startup, and especially in Vagina's Rising mode, there's a bad use of it. If you have if you have Celebi as Darkrai and you're using it in this mode, don't do it, but as an example, you can use it to leave it. Field face is good, so he doesn't can't get it up to begin with, and has armor also. The thing with this move, though, is, of course, the long startup. You can get grabbed, like, very easily. Like, I'm going to delay a bit. And I still grabbed him. In this situation, though, it still might be good. Because if you are in field phase and they grab you, then that means that you are in dual phase, not in Bad Dreams Rising. can be very hard to do against a burst of Dark Cry because he can either do burst attack or his grab will bring him into Bad Dreams Rising because he gains that property of any phase shift doing that. Uh, Dark Cry's movement in field phase can be also... Like, he can avoid it kind of easily. A little bit. Not like that, but in certain situations, like if you're kind of in the mid-range, he'll be able to do it. Because he does have a very fast walking speed. It can be kind of awkward in dual phase, because if you do get the grab here for Darkrai, he does get a knockdown. And he can set up. And then it makes it more likely he could just go back in it anyway if he does get the grab. So it's very good to use this only... Well, not only, but... If you're desperate to get in, you want to take the grab, sure. Feel the dual grab, it's not that bad because it doesn't knock down. But mainly try to aim for it when Darkrai is trying to do something. And having it can even scare Darkrai into just pressing nothing and trying to play out a neutral so he can get like a grab. Uh, if you're in Bad Dreams Rising, also be careful of his command grab that deals a million damage while also getting a knockdown and healing. And I think some syner synergy also, it does a lot. <laughs> okay, so this next one for Darkrai. It's a pretty obvious one, but it's one people tend to forget about. I want to say this just to make it so it's always in the back of your head. Nightmare here. It is a very destructive move. Does a lot of damage. Frame 1 invulnerability. So that's why you have to keep an eye on it. So if he's like ever knocked down, he's just like, hey, what if I just do this? And then you take a million damage because he can combo after it too. It's like comboing off of a DP. Thing is though with this move, it is very punishable on block. So even if you... Do not react to it with like an anti-air per se. I guess I can show that real off real quick. You can't anti-air it. Sometimes it's kind of weird though. If you do block it, while you do take the chip damage, it is very punishable even with this little teleport. As you saw right there, he's not frame one invincible right away as he's trying to teleport. So, and Sentos is, uh, his, that move he did was a frame 15. That means you can be a little bit lenient with it, even for slower characters. So like Empoleon can do Aqua Jet or Drill Pack. Uh, Sceptile could do his 5Y. V2 could do his anti-air, I would feel. 
it's very, very good to keep that in mind. And it seems a bit obvious, but just just don't get hit by the move. <laughs> it can catch you off guard, and it's more just a reminder, and that it's very punishable more than you would think. It's a sort of situation to uh, Charizard's Fire Punch, but not as talked about as much. So that's why I'm bringing it up here. All right, for the Sijuai here, this is more of a character-specific thing. The Sijuai, one of his main things is that he likes to do instant air JYs. And this can be very difficult for our shorter characters because they will not get hit. Thing is, though, with this move, he can't do anything if he whiffs it. As you can see right here, he can do it on glide on hit and continue combos that way. But on whiff, it's kind of difficult. And then you can get your own punish as soon as he lands. Now, because it's a short character, you're probably going to be like, okay, why would he ever do it against short characters to begin with? Well, some characters have low stances, for example. Some of their low stances will be so low that you'll avoid it anyway. This could be a bit risky. But it could be a very ideal thing to do to make them think, oh yeah, I can just do my instant air JY, and then you just end up ducking. Even in situations like that, if it's kind of late a bit, certain characters can still get hit if he does it early enough. But like, uh, I was testing out with Empoleon because he doesn't duck as low as Sceptile. I feel like it was frame perfect when I was testing it. So they always got to be careful that they could just do this if you are willing to risk it. And I think it is a worthy risk to do from time to time because this could get a lot of damage on him. Like... Something like that, because 210 damage around that much is still pretty good for something that's just bit off of this from a grounded hit too. Like this is going from ground to air very quickly because the Situai has a lot of options to bring you from the ground up into the air, and this is his main move to do that. And then another thing I want to talk about that's like a, <laughs> a move that could be punished on block, but sometimes I see people fail it even if they are able to, because this is a this is a more awkward move. Uh, is this move is punishable? It does push them pretty far, so some characters may struggle with grab ranges for the grabs. And other characters who can't punish with their grabs may not be able to do it. You still get advantage, so it's still your turn. So always be careful that when you do block this move, you can have the option. For other characters that also have frame 11 moves that are not grabs, like Sceptiles, for instance, it's forward Y. I've seen many people do this and then be like, homing attack will work, and then they get Frenzy Planted, <laughs> because that's an option they will do sometimes against, like, I guess Empoleon, because they'll be like, oh, you can't do it. I'll just press a button, because clearly you're going to take your turn. And then I'm like, dang it, you're right, and I get hit. Now, this is right here. Bonus one. As I said, two or three, and most of these are two. Here's the third one. Projectile burst attacks can have this happen to them. And then punished. Uh, we Weavile Libre uh, with double team slash agility, respectively. Did I say, wait, which order did I say that? Oh, whatever. This is double team. That's all you need to know. <laughs> the other one's agility. Now, Libre, you have to do it preemptively, because if you try doing it right here, you're going to get hit. You can do it from far away, though, because as I mentioned, it does take a while for it to get to it. So you can do that, though I guess you can't punish it. But hey, he was safe from the Valentin. <laughs> and then Weavile is frame one, so you are able to do it right away and punish it. Okay, so starting off with the Penguin Man, who is bad at playing the game. He has moves that can be perfect blocked in field phase. Now, stuff like level one Aqua Jet into Cut or Rock Smash is very common. And even for the other levels, it can be done. It's just the timing for it is slightly different. So both of these can be perfect blocked and then punished promptly. Even Rock Smash does, even though it has 2H. You can either do two of them, which can be more difficult to be able to punish Empoleon with, or you could do the second option, which is just doing the first one and then punishing him with a jump. Some people also make do grabs because you're able to hit him in time with a grab, but I feel like a jump would more often than not be a lot safer for certain characters who may not have the best grabs. Yeah. Usually he would just come to you with characters who have faster grabs, and, but for Empoleon here in the ditto, not very too good. Now there is a thing here that people will fall for sometimes, because you have Waterfall here, which is a move you might not expect to come from it because it's punishable on block. So and if they do this, it's like, oh, you just did that, you're weird. But the thing is, because it's an I-11 move when it's able to come out, you will be having to deal with that. I tried the perfect block there. It's a multi-hit move, so even if you were to block it, somehow you're not able to do it. But either way, it's supposed to catch people who want to delay their attacks to hit Rock Smash or Cut. And this is the same for situations like Surf. A jump beat Surf, uh, attacks beat Surf, grabs don't beat Surf. That's the thing though. And now speaking of just the Aqua Jet things in general, besides just the perfect blocking, because there's more to this. In level 1 to Cut, this beats it, this beats it, and Empoleon's is slow, but faster grabs are able to beat it too, surprisingly. And this is what makes it awkward for Empoleon sometimes. He has so much weight against him, but he has ways of dealing with it. He has Rock Smash, which will beat the attacking option or the countering option. And he has Surf, which will beat the surfing option. There is just three things that get beaten out by one option for Empoleon, but then he has the one op the other option, the fourth one, that will beat it 
out what the opponent's trying to do. So an attack or grab in the case of Rock Smash or Surf. So you always got to make sure to be careful of that. Jump can also beat some of the options at level one, uh, especially off a of drill pack. This also applies to drill pack on block. And the only one jumping doesn't beat is Waterfall. Even though Cut hits kind of wide, you could still like cross over him in time and that will punish him. But Waterfall is like very risky, but it's possible to do that. It's mainly good in the corner so you can keep your opponent in the corner or at least hit them so they can't get out of the corner for entirely free. And then the last thing I want to talk about, which is also Aqua Jet related, because everything's all about Aqua Jet with this character, is that when you're in this range, it's reactable. And when it's reactable, you can jump it. That wasn't really on reactions, but like a lot of people have done this like that. I guess that, that's a perfect example of how people would react to it, especially if they notice you're in the range. They will usually, if they're more high mobility, they'll walk backwards too or backdash. Uh, not on reaction, but just to be careful. I'm talking like this is of Empoleon trying to learn not to do this, but <laughs> I guess it kind of is. Like Empoleon, please just recognize it. But always do something like this against Empoleon when you realize that he's good, trying to set up for Aqua Jet. And while he can do something like JY here to help protect him from jump ins, uh, you can still back up a bit. Uh, because he has to jump in forward a bit so you can have room to jump back a bit or just move back a bit if you are a faster character so you would be able to get out of aqua jet range like this talking about all those characters aqua jets and hm moves because it's what defines him the most so you know that's why there's a million things talking about him like that all right for the boy garchomp here and his torpedo tail or whatever he has dig dig is a very pretty decently versatile move but not in the ways you might expect it is mainly used for the ability to mix up the opponent and be able to do a lot of damage. Sometimes it's used in combos, it can be used to avoid attacks. Thing is though, it's pretty slow, reactable, and the problem with it mainly is that while it can do this type of uh, stuff for mix-ups, like get out of the thing before you do the actual dig attack because this is punishable on block, the thing is, when you do that, and you see him coming, you can counter it. And characters who have high counters can even be out the jump option sometimes. Even if you can't be out the jump option, being able to see ADC, whether he does the jump or not is very good because if he does something like AJX afterward because he sees your CA and he's like, okay, I'll try to beat out your CA. You can do a CADC uh, for faster characters and be able to CA again. Uh, slower characters might want to back up a bit, but they would still be able to at least avoid the situation entirely. Slow projectiles against Dig are very useful because of how linear it can be sometimes, even if it is a little versatile. Garchomp's approach game is kind of awkward sometimes if you can't go into running stance because running stance, while it can tr go transferred into Dig, that means he's going to have to go in the dig because <laughs> he can't run into it. Sometimes if you put it at certain heights, it's very hard for him to jump over it. And he's just forced to do something like that. And he put him in very good positions to where you can do that counter scenario I mentioned. And be stylish like that if you get the bubble like that. <laughs> Garchomp can also go into his drill. And while that can delete projectiles, it's still very risky. And you could also counter it anyway. And you'll be safe if you have a slow projectile because you most likely, if you were going to do it, you'd be able to act out of it real quick and do stuff like that and even then when he jumps out he can't have the bubble or directly above him or also get hit another thing he can kind of do though is do that where he can just jump out of the ground without going into the air the projectile will beat that if you set it up but also you can just kind of react to it like if you're preparing to ca and that's kind of the downside with all this uh they just put it in summary is that you can react to every situation he is put in like oh he's coming at me okay i'll ca okay ca will beat out dig it'll beat out jump if you have a high ca it'll beat out when he tries to fake it it's just very reliable to do counter in that range, and if he doesn't do it, you just run away. It's just kind of an awkward move once you realize its weaknesses, besides the fact that it's just punishable on block. Because, wow, that hit his, like, dorsal fit. <laughs> uh, you could just, like, punish it in ver the various ways I mentioned. It's one of the easiest moves you can see coming, because he can do it from full screen like that. Even from up close, you can recognize, oh, he went into the ground. And then relate the counterattacks again, actually, which is funny for a character who can beat out counterattacks very hard with Sa <laughs> Santin right here, is that counter will beat out homing one into homing two a lot of the time because homing one is punishable on block. So most of the time you'll see Garchomp do homing two, partly charge two. I'm not sure exactly why, because it's not a block string if you do it right away. I think maybe just to fake you out into thinking they'll fully charge it. But from what I know, they mostly go for this to be safe. And a lot of the time because of that, they'll get punished with a counter attack. Very much so. Now you do have to be careful of the fully charge, but because it does beat it out, and, but it's very rare. And I've had several situations against many Garchomp players where I will counter them literally every time and they won't go for the full charge. It's also playing against with someone like Septile whose uh, counter is faster. Sometimes you can even react to the homing coming in and counter the first hit. Very notable thing, especially for those faster CA characters. Gardevoir here, she is the pretty one, so therefore she will clearly do this move and <laughs> attack you like that. Freeing for real though, uh, this move 
It's something you'll see Gardevoirs do from time to time in mid-screen. It's another move like Nightmare for Darkrai where you'd want to keep it in mind because this could deal a lot of damage for various... I don't know the combo routes, but it could deal a lot of damage if they land it because it's a very strong starter, not much scaling. It avoids highs, I'm pretty sure. And all around, it can be very devastating if your opponent also has some Calm Mind boosts because then they could do stuff like this. And then you dealt just around 200 damage to them. Now, what do you want to do against this move? Well, the easy answer is most characters are able to punish it on block with their I-11 moves. For someone like Lucario, you could do something like 2-Y. Many characters 2-Ys are I-11. But even besides that, being able to counter at these ranges uh, with characters like Septo, who have faster dashes and counterattacks, can be very useful because it's just like, oh, you did it, I had the feeling. And if they don't do it, then you can see ADC. Or something like that, too, if you decide, oh, wait, let me just keep doing it over and over again. God of War does have moves that can pierce, like her 2x, but in general, this is very safe, and if you see the 2x animation coming up, because it is, admittedly, very slow, like, very slow, you can see ADC backward, and then avoid it that way. Jumping could also be pretty effective for dealing with this move, not sure on reaction, but, like, preemptive jumps. Thing is, though, it can be kind of awkward, because God of War has this giant 8y button that she could do on a reaction if she doesn't press anything, but I've seen, I've done plenty of times where I've done a jump over 6x before not right in front of her because it does hit pretty high i'm pretty i can only assume and i think i've been hit by it a few times but if you try to cross her up and then punish her that way it should be very effective then and now i want to talk about her counters because her counters are pretty unique depending on if she's in burst or not now you've heard of any moves that change in between bursts like mega ganger is a perfect example most of his moveset changes then but for gardevoir it's the same move and on block here, she has recoil. She's minus here. A lot of counterattacks when you fully charge, they're plus. But in this case, she's minus. It's the same for her air CA as well. And this one is actually punishable on block. Depends on the height. Uh, but she's like always punishable no matter what, I'm very sure. As you see, she doesn't do the recoil animation anymore for both of them. This means that she is even on block for the grounded one. And I think around even also in the air one. Depends on the height, obviously, but around even then. And it's going to be very scary, especially if you're out of burst, because you can't really challenge with a grab, because she can easily press the button. She has a burst attack that goes in the air, uh, kind of a little bit, so it could catch people who are trying to jump right away. And she can just all around put you in a very nasty situation since you can't use your lights, because she's in burst. If you're in burst, it's a little easier, because you're both even on block, but certain characters don't like that, like Sceptiles, because he doesn't have an I-11 that isn't a grab. So, super awkward then. And it's kind of just as a warning because you can sometimes just forget that, like, oh, wait, she doesn't go into a recoil animation. And now it's just like, oh, I thought I could punish this air CA, but in actuality, I can't. <laughs> I have to stay there and block a bit. And, of course, you can just mix up with the grab, too. It just puts her in a very nasty situation. Luckily, the air one is very reactable, and she can't charge it more to pierce, so you can always just react to it with the CA. So it's not, like, unbeatable, clearly. Or you could be Sceptile and be, like, Leaf Store. <laughs> oh, yeah, I guess it is notable that she can also cancel it into a double jump and then attack out of it but it's very slow so even if you were going to try to counter it on reaction you're still probably safe so yeah just remember that from time to time you might have to see adc and then another thing her projectile burst attack is in fact a projectile burst attack we found libre mains you know what to do in the situation uh libre has an easier time doing this one because it doesn't reach full screen until super far so yeah just keep that in mind i guess gengar's permeate is kind of his main tool in the air to avoid attacks it's very good, has a lot of iframes, and can generally be all around very annoying because you can go into attack right away. So what you need to look out for when he does stuff like this is that lingering moves that stay in the air a long time, like example, uh, Septile's AY, can beat him out of it. Now, that is a lot harder said than done. Characters who don't really have a lingering attack, though, can find this very awkward. You might have to time an attack, so like just wait with your anti-air until that point. But he could also go into other things like Astonish, and that can be very difficult to time. You always got to be careful what he's going to do. Uh, and there's situations where you'll try to air-to-air -air Gengar, and then he'll just disappear and try to punish you in various ways. Like that. And if they do it high up, it could still be very difficult. You can't technically hit the Astonish and, like, technically all the other attacks before they come out. It's very difficult to deal with, and a master uh, Gengar player will make sure that they are invulnerable when they think your attack is coming out. Like, a lot of air-to-air -air situations will happen like that. And they'll usually try to do faster moves, like you could they could do JY off there and maybe punish me there. But it's always good to keep in mind that if you have a lingering move and you're trying to bait it out, or you just want to time your move correctly, do remember that Permeate is always a thing, the thing he's probably going to do most, because he does have a slow jump, and otherwise he's just going to be landing with a JY, and in which case, 
just blocking it, it's fine anyway. So this line of logic also applies to Ghost Ashes. So someone like Gengar, Chandelure, uh, Aegis Slash, Decidueye, Darkrai, all of them could do Ghost Ashes like this. And if you be patient enough in whether, it's mostly when they're knocked down, not so much in neutral, unless you are Darkrai or sometimes Decidueye. Ghosts are very, very tricky. We're trying to like maintain advantage in their own right by making you think, oh wait, you can't, you don't actually have advantage because you dodged this move. And then he'll punish you with something like a grab. But it's just like the bane of all <laughs> invincibility moves, my HY. Have fun. Now the other move I want to talk about is Charge Shadow Punch. This one can be jumped, not punishable, but it's a good thing in neutral to be able to get out of the situation if you do so wish. That was kind of awkward. But the other thing I want to talk about is in the corner. Notice how right here, he pushes me back a slight amount. That makes it so I can't do something like this. But in the corner, because I'm already already pushed all the way back, I could actually do this. The punches don't reach me in time, which is very funny. Now the uses for this, because if a Gengar knows they can't do it, then they'll just, you know, not ever do it in the corner and just do their under pressure. It's basically a thing to beat out people who think you don't know that you can do that. So you could be like, yeah, I watched Jukun's video. <laughs> if they do it for characters who don't have as fast grabs, because it's mainly just for grabs that will prevent you from ever getting hit. Actually, wait. Oh, I guess any lunging move can really do it in that situation. That's pretty fun. But yeah, it's mainly just a knowledge check the knowledge check because it's just like, you thought I didn't know. I did know. <laughs> okay, Lucario time. Lucario likes to use Bonor Shallot. And this is going to be pretty obvious to a lot of people who uh, probably, you know, do this all the time. And it's just like muscle memory. On block, if you block the first hits, you can mash CA. So like mash it like multiple times. Don't hold it. And you will be able to do a counter like this. This is an OS that beats out both the upward swing and the downward swing. Now, what happens if they don't do any swing? And if you do the same thing where you're like, okay, let me just match the counter. It doesn't actually come out. So it comes out during the swinging options, but doesn't come out during the one where he doesn't swing at all. So you can punish it with a different move, like a grab. Very simple, very cool. Something the most of the community knows, but for anyone who's like wondering like, oh, how do I deal with bone rush? It's kind of annoying, there's that. And now the Oki option you will see a lot of Lucario's do. This is charge 6x. Usually, the extreme speed I did there at the end is supposed to beat out counterattacks. Thing is, though, it doesn't really do a good at doing that. Unless they, like, delay it a bit. So, you can delay it slightly, like I guess I can show here. If you do something like this. Like that, I guess? I don't even think that was part of the attack. But, a lot of the time, which I'm surprised it's still done now to this day, is that they will do E-speed and it'll counter through it anyway. And then they're super punishable. Like, super punishable. Like, that's what they're supposed to th think it's going to happen. But with the way everything is timed, you're going to be able to get a big punish like this. So here's the logic behind this, I guess, real quick, is that when you go and wake up, your first frame up ever is going to be counterattack. It's not going to be like a situation like this where I do it a little later, unless they delay it willingly. So you're always going to be able to have this situation happen to you. However, the alternative to this e-speed dilemma is they can do Bone Rush Slam. This slam here actually beats out counterattacks like Chandelure's or Lu another Lucario's, which hits pretty kind of low, like it's a mid-low, but not something like a uh, Sceptile here. So characters who have that going for them will be able to hit him out of there. Now what happens if you don't have a high hitting counterattack like this? Here's the thing, it's kind of awkward. You might have to deal, do something like this and try to do that only for faster dashes, obviously. And it gets even more awkward because Lucario also has multiple hits of Bone Rush. That's just like the earliest I was doing there. So it's kind of a mix up then, but this is mainly just for the extreme speed follow up because that just is the most common one. And you can get a big punish if you see ADC it. Cause it's just like, oh no, haha, I crossed you up at extreme speed. Haha, I can, <laughs> I can just immediately dash forward and get any punish I want on him. Another awkward situation though, is if they realize, oh wait, I'm fighting a character with a high hitting counter attack. What if I do Force Palm, which is a million hits in itself. Well, that will actually beat it out. You have to kind of do that. And that's kind of the same rhythm as with Bone Rush, if you want to do it ideally, at least for Subtile, because you hit the Bone Rush before it comes out too. But that also means you kind of can get hit by E-Speed, which is like the one use for it, is after you already condition it. Not so much of a, I'm going to do it right away, but after conditioning them to be countering an attack and letting go like that to beat out Bone Rush or Force Palm. And in that case, you do what I said before, it's just CADC. Yeah, so something like that is what can happen to you. But you can do that even for slower characters. And of course, if you have a Ghost Dash, you can also try to beat it out like that. Oh, and I guess just in general for 6x, uh, if you have a DP, just do the DP. <laughs> don't even bother blocking the 6x. It, just, just do this. It'll beat it out and you don't have to worry about any sort of cancels. Like, he can't do this. 
into E speed after seeing your own E speed, he will just get hit. Same applies to Frenzy Plant, to Vault Tackle, all of those. Uh, but Champ, I guess first off, is that while he's not known for projectiles, this move can be very difficult to deal with sometimes if you don't know how to. It's a very good rookie killer. It does seem very good. It has big prior it has a big area, bigger than you would think actually, and it goes at a very weird angle where you can't go in from above. And he can angle it. Thing is though with this move is that as you can see right here, he can't hit under me like that. And also you can just kind of walk and block it because it doesn't have that much like shield block stun. So I know this is gonna make a lot of people scared of like, oh, how, what do I do against this? I don't know what to press. You could just do something like this. <laughs> like if he just keeps spamming it over and over again. Uh, character height may matter. Shorter characters will have it easier. Except how kind of like ducks a bit when he does his homing attack. Yeah, it just has very low block stun. So you can just like walk and block towards him. And wow, I just did that very late grab. Yeah, it's like that. Very vulnerable if I'm block at face value. And by face value, I mean in his face. <laughs> but everything thing about this move that can make it easier to deal with is if you're a zoner or just someone with other projectiles. Because it doesn't have the highest projectile priority except for the explosion at the very end, which is very annoying admittedly. But you can do stuff like that too before the explosion even happens. So that is the rock. I hate the rock, honestly. I've died to many a rock and I'm only labbing it now. <laughs> no, admittedly, I'm a top player. I'm a pro. I should know how to do this. I don't know how to do this. <laughs> Another dumb move to deal with, even without the rookies, is that this... It's kind of dumb. Now, this is like an area you would think, oh, I can anterior it. That should be easy, right? You're wrong. You can't anterior it. Unless it's like very preemptive like that. And that's not even anterioring. That's just like doing it preemptively. That's like if you hit someone out of the air with your 5Y. It's very weird. I don't know why they programmed it like this. And it, he's also immune to highs when he lands for some reason. But I guess I'm subtle. I can't complain. How you deal with this move is that if you see it coming, oh, it's also plus some block. Uh, how you deal with this move is you counter. But sometimes there's going to be situations where characters who have slower CAs, sometimes a bit lucky here, where you are not going to be able to hit him in time before he can block. For characters with faster CAs though, this could be amended a bit by doing a CADC grab and you can either punish them, or if they are going to block, they are not going to be able to react to your dash grab, unless you're a slower character, in which case, oh well. <laughs> and you're going to be able to not only hit them, but also shit the faces. They'll usually use this move when you're in the corner. So if you can get the grab off, Especially if you have a one where they shoot you very far. Like, I didn't even know that shot him that far. Whoa, that's crazy. <laughs> From one side to the other. <laughs> okay, well, either way, you're going to be able to launch them and you're going to maintain momentum and you'll have room to fight the grappler a bit better instead of just being in the corner. Just never try to block this move unless you're forced to. But yeah, that's how you deal with that move, kind of. It's still going to be very difficult to deal with. I kind of said it in a way that makes it seem like it's kind of easy to do, but very good Machamps will know when to use this move and in ways to where they're going to be safe. But I will say I have found success in doing the CADC method of just doing this. And like, oh, you shielded? Oh, well, well, I get momentum anyway. Just make sure they don't adapt and attack you instead of just blocking. <laughs> And then one last thing, and this is mainly a thing related to all characters with high CAs is that, well... They're high counterattacks. <laughs> you can duck them. Characters, even characters who don't have low stances that are immune to highs, generally have attacks that will be immune. So, like, say Sceptile couldn't duck it. If he does 2Y, that'll make him immune to highs anyway. Briefly. A good example of this, actually, is Machamp himself because his low stance uh, counters lows, uh, not even highs. So, you're able to do something like 2X and go under opposing Machamps or other high counterattacks and dealing with that. And it's a lot easier to deal with than other... Uh, high attacks like you could be like oh how am I supposed to deal with Sceptile 5x because well there's not too much of a charge up period it's very quick but for this one this one's pretty quick for an uncharged CA but if they decide to charge it then there's a lot more time to react to it and the good thing about this is that even if they do realize oh wait he's ducking low and trying to backdash away you're able to react in time and be able to punish them sometimes but champ does have a very good backdash but generally you'd like to poke out anyway with this and try to hit them anyway going over and over again just being like 2y 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 why are you doing that i am afraid what i'm scared but yeah generally any high counter attack can be defeated just by ducking low or doing attack that's low over and over again just be careful if they do any fancy things with their counter attack dashes for the mewtwo the guy who floats and is very tall wow he towers over him this is as high as he goes with his low stance but yes mewtwo i want to talk about Confusion and barrier in general too, but let's start with confusion. Confusion is very quick. As you can see, he's putting up the block right away. That said, it's punishable. Many people might not know this just because of how fast he gets out of it. Even on the whiff, he's just like, you know, whatever. But yes, it is punishable because it has very little block stun. This could also mess up your timing a bit, which is the second reason I mentioned before. It's just like, yeah, people mess up this a lot, not just because they don't know about it, but you could also just grab punish it and it will be a crit. 
Now it's the character sort of slower like this because it's only minus 12. I keep saying that, but just like always keep that in mind because this is a very tricky move sometimes. But generally, when you fight Mewtwo, kind of want to jump barrier. Like if you react to barrier, like if you want to delay it a bit to see what you're going to do. Best case scenario would be to just jump because all his options can't reach you. He has teleport, which will teleport in a way. He has drain punch, confusion, and he has a command grab and telekinesis. In this situation, you'd want to jump and then try to punish him. Like that's a very common situation is that they'll delay themselves and sometimes they'll go for telekinesis if you are waiting too long but telekinesis does has quite a bit of scaling i think if i recall so it's not gonna be too much damage but you should probably be able to jump it even before telekinesis someone like Empoleon can even pierce like this if they do decide to wait a bit so he can jump a little bit early very beneficial to him you should all should play Empoleon. definitely remember that just all of his options can be jumped and if you do end up having to block confusion you can punish it it's like two things layered at once that can confuse someone. It's a lot easier once you put some practice into it. And real quick, because I have three things to talk about actually for this character, is that uh, Psychic Cut is a high. <laughs> Don't fall for this if it's a high. Hyper Beam is also high. And for both of these moves, you're able to, if you're in range at least, uh, for certain characters who have two Xs or just are able to move while low stancing, uh, they could do stuff like this. That was supposed to hit, but Empoleon's so slow. <laughs> He's so slow. I don't know how to do this. I'm too lazy to re-record it. So it's nothing like that <laughs> to the effect. Uh, for Hyper Beam, it can even be done even better because he takes a longer time to do it. I will literally punish you from full screen. It's a situation very similar to Chandler's Air Laser where you can just punish it right away like this. And I forgot to mention it for the Chandler Laser, but at the very least, if you don't make it for certain characters can't do what Empoleon can do or other characters can move. At the very least, just like move. Like, for Septile example, I use 2x to move to get closer and be able to maintain pressure a bit more because they are very minus still, and they'll kind of have to respect your option. Being able to just get in range there is very, very good. And the last thing I want to talk about is another OS of sorts. Not one where you can punish someone, but one that's still very useful nonetheless. Uh, lying in the video title, I see, Jacob. Yes, I am. <laughs> uh, that is Mewtwo's homing attack. Mewtwo's homing attack is a block streak. I'm mashing it right now. So that means you could just mash a button right now and not have to worry about homing to connect it. Because he is still minus no matter what. Uh, that's actually a bad example because Empoleon is kind of slow. <laughs> nah, nah, I'm kidding. Aqua Jet. Aqua Jet's always the answer. <laughs> but yes, you could always put out your Aqua uh, option and be able to punch him. He can do homing three, and that may want you to be a little hesitant. But it's still very useful to keep this in mind. Because if he does only homing one, then you can still do your option and it'll still be minus. Very, very good to keep in mind. All right, so we have the mascot here. And the mascot is got a good JX. JX, though, is punishable on block. This is height dependent, though. If he hits you low, it's not going to be punishable on block. If he hits you high, though, very punishable on block. Smaller characters are going to have a harder time dealing with this because they're already pretty low. I think it's, like, pretty generous, too, with how it is. But otherwise, if you're a tall character and he hits you high, you're going to have a very good time in just being able to block it and then straight up punish it and win the face. Very good to keep in mind for a character who gets a lot of synergy for winning field phase because he's only 100cc. Definitely one of his best field phase moves, and that's why Pikachus will tend to do, like I mentioned before, of aiming for you low. Or hit you early on if they think you're going to press a button because you're up close to their face. So, of course, they'll be like, here's my counter dive kick. That seems very fair. But then you just be patient and then do something like that. That's very useful. Of course, if you do hit it like this, I, you're still plus. So, definitely keep in mind that you can still take your turn. Might as well just press a button. They could also just decide, like, if they have the time, do it again and then just beat you out. Or just do counterattack. Counterattacks are always very weird in this game. It's just like, hi, I just beat you out, even though it's supposedly your turn. And then the other move for Pikachu is quite simple. Thunder is very weird because he stays in the air throughout the entirety. It's not like Shadow Mewtwo's Thunder, where he does the attack and then lands and then the thunder hits. Because in this case... He's doing it during the attack, so it makes him much more vulnerable. Where you're like, oh, he did that? Okay, I guess I'll just punish him with anything, really. And having a thing where it's just like, I have a hitbox at the beginning of it does not make up for it compared to Shadow Mewtwo Thunder. Unless you're in air-to-air -air situations, I guess. Faster characters may be able to actually punish there a little more easily. Characters with longer range CAs will be able to hit him. He can cancel his Thunder, which does make him more mobile, but it still puts him in like weird angles like this, and he can't attack out of it too. 
but it's very reactable because of that so you'd be able to do counter to try to block the thunder you see the thunder coming out you try to ca dash to get out of the way or to ca the thunder and then if you're somewhat close you could still punish him with something like a grab or if he does the jx you'll punish him with like your counter attack anyway this move is mainly used for the movement so it's mostly the ladder you'll have to rely on and be like oh he's going to be pressing a button maybe in the air or he could just land too that's always something he could just do and anteriors would still also help with either situation if he just wanted to land in your face or if he decided to go for an aerial option he also can't thunder again off this so you know he, you don't have to worry about that option imagine just going infinite height doing thunder over and over again <laughs> wow as a mascot you really had the shortest section you're pretty simple and pretty bad well you know what they say new year new me <laughs> i say in july <laughs> all right libre her situation is similar to mewtwo and chandelure's where discharge here is a hot do i really need to demonstrate anything else you can do two x's to go under it uh for every character you can move around under it with st something like empoleon empoleon actually wait, i guess i could mention this uh it's similar more to psycho cut compared to uh the other ones because she lands and you're able to punish her right away it's not like a situation where you will miss the 2x but then you can punish it with something else you can use it to punish it with something like this now she can cancel her discharge like this and that can make it very awkward to deal with because when she uses discharge and she cancels it she is immune to lows because she's in the air but as soon as she lands she's able to block or counter so she won't be able to get hit by any lows at any point in the entirety of the move uh, only when she does discharge because she has that ending line when you do something like this and counter right away certain characters who can move around during their 2x's or whatever if you're just trying to duck it and you see them do it because it be doing something like this is safe at least to just prepare yourself for it and you see oh they did nothing okay i'll just play neutral again but if you are going to go for a certain characters like empoleon we'll be able to do something like that and avoid it now we're going to get into the infamous thing which is a mimic you unblockable setup with electroweb electroweb is a command graphic that can hit in the air so that means you are not even able to jump it like you could with other command grabs if they mistimed mimic you this makes it very very toxic because if you're at one hp you either die from electroweb or she whiffs electroweb and you get hit by mimic you but the mimic you hits you so many times that you can just combo it off anyway it's very hard to get out of this situation unless you have like a ghost dash and even then if you're in the corner you kind of suck and the main reliable way to do it is if you run a support like umbreon also fennekin but mainly umbreon and sometimes you'll even be able to not get hit by the last few hits of Mimikyu. I think it's depending on the timing, but like in this situation, you are able to jump it. Of course, you can't combo off of Umbreon, but it's a good tool to get Libre off of you. And it even removes some of her synergy. This is more of a personal thing too. Like if you don't mind have, being in this situation a lot and you're like, I, I want to use another support for this. It's fine, but Umbreon really helps in this situation. And what makes it another good uh, option is that Umbreon and Mimikyu, they do have different charge times to begin with. So Mimikyu is 30 seconds initially, and then Umbreon is 40 seconds. For those who don't know, when you use a support, they have a secondary charge time they go off of, which is why some supports can only be used once. So in this case, Umbreon and Mimikyu are both 40 seconds. That means no matter what, if you use Umbreon in this situation exactly, it's going to always be available, even if they do the setup exactly when they get Mimikyu back. You could get baited, but it's definitely a situation that's in your favor once you start using Umbreon. Heck, it even make them feel weird using Mimikyu in general, because that's mainly what uh, Libres would use it for, is just the setup and not much else. Sometimes they'll use it in neutral, I think, but just for the setup, basically. And if you counter that, then you basically just give them no support. <laughs> All right, now we get to my main, and this is where I tell you there is no countering Sceptile. He's the best in the game. No, but he does have a few things that will definitely help a lot of people. So first off, Sceptile's Leaf Blade. Leaf Blade is different between the phases. Not only does it like look visually hit wider here than it does in here, but their frame data is actually very different. In field phase, it's minus 20, while in dual phase, it's actually minus 16. So as you can see from a tipper Leaf Blade from this distance, he's able to block in time. But in field phase, he's able to get punished. This is just the main example is that because I've personally been bone rushed by <laughs> many a Lucario, but this applies to other characters with very quick moves. Like I guess, for example, Blastoise's forward Y, Decidueye forward Y is another good example of that. Newell phase, it's a little, you know, less minus. So you mainly would want to do something like bone rush when you're up close. Uh, or at least like mid-range when you do it. I don't want people to be like, I accidentally attacked the Sceptile and he just spammed CA on my Bone Rush because I thought I was punchable. Because that would be to my favor, and I like that. And then we get to the stupid move that I know a lot of people complain about, and that is Detect. Detect. Basically, what I've seen happen with this, against personal experience, again, is that people will generally, when Sceptile uses Detect, and they get the hit, they will like to do Leech Seed to move around. Or at the very least, they will move forward. Either way, he's able to be hit out of the... 
I've never had that happen before. I'm so glad I'm recording this. But yeah, basically, you can hit him out of the air like that. And that could be very difficult because Septile could also do something like this. Like that and do JY and pop you up in the air for a full combo. Or get you in the Poison Cloud, which will, you know, still continue the combo. Plus, I think he's also left plus because the Poison Cloud's there. But generally, that can beat out many of Septile's options. It can beat out his lead seed movement. It can beat out his swing animation entirely. Do gotta mention, though, the Poison Cloud will still go off even if you do hit Septile. So always be careful to not stay in the Poison Cloud after you hit Septile. Because I've had that happen a lot, too. And then I end up winning anyway. <laughs> Oh, and one last thing. Please, for... Oh my goodness. Love of Arceus. Please just punish Lee Storm. I'm, I'm so tired of people just like... I do this move and they can't punish it on time. Like, are you... Uh. I just, I mean, it's good for me, because, like, as soon as I decide to just do Lee Storm and I realize, oh, I'm not going to whiff punish, I just spam detect. And then, guess what? They, they decide to commit. And then that happens. <laughs> All the time. It, it's common. But I'm not plus on whiff. I think. <laughs> you stupid little thing. I hate this character. But basically, Scizor CA, if you've ever fought a Scizor, you know it's kind of annoying because he could cancel it into another CA and it's just overpowered and it's just all around kind of pretty toxic. I've talked about this move before here. But generally, the way you be want to beat this move is not through your own skill, but using a support. <laughs> This support is Lin, or honestly, you can use Mega Rayquaza. I've seen other supports use. Amalga's pretty decent, I guess, too, but his hover dash can delete projectiles and that includes Amalga, so that's very awkward to use. Anyway, main thing is uh, Litten. Litten goes pretty far, and it's very useful with its piercing. You mainly would want to probably use this later on in the fight because then it gets leveled up into different stages depending on how much HP you have, so below a certain value would be a very big thing, like very big. Look at all that damage. It's a notorious move, and this is kind of like a notorious set to fight Scizor with, funnily enough, because it's not only good against fighting his counter, but it's good against fighting his jump, because for some reason, because for some reason he just struggles a bit when trying to jump it. Like, that was a very weird hurtbox. I think it even gets bigger in a, bit, in a level 2. When he tries to jump it on reaction, he can struggle and end up getting hit anyway. And then you can just maintain your momentum for that on. So I guess it's just kind of a counter to Scizor in general, which half the time it's CA, so that's Scizor in general. <laughs> so if it's not staples, it's counter. Now, going back to the CA real quick, because he can cancel it into block very quickly. Like that, he does it like a homing attack and then cancels right after CA. God, this character's so stupid. But at the very least, if it's the higher levels, you're still plus on block and you can have time to get in. And you can prevent him from doing other stupid stuff like staples. Because this is also a very stupid move. And I guess that brings me back to the thing I want to talk about next, which is his neutral eye. Staples. <laughs> Litten also very good if they just use any other attack anyway. But yes, anyway, sorry. Staples. Uh, staples are very annoying to deal with just because they stay around. They're pretty quick. He can do them twice, apparently, like that <laughs> for a combo. He can do homing off of it. That's just how fast it is. But nothing's more annoying than the amount of stables. And sometimes he'll even want to do it right here to prevent you from going in. I've seen other scissors even do it on synergy crystals on the ground. So then it walls you off from them. Now, what can help you deal with this? Like I said, he'll want to do it sometimes in neutral because of various reasons. And because of this, other projectiles can go over because they are lows. Generally, it'll be kind of hard to do because of something I'll mention later, but it is something you can do. And for other characters who can go over highs, like Empoleon, for example, he can also do that. Now, the weird thing with this move is that it is special cancelable. And he has a DP in field phase. So you could probably guess where I'm going with this. A lot of the time, if you're in his face, countering... Why does it reach that far? Uh, countering is a good option. Another good option, in fact. And stuff like that could happen. And it's very dirty to deal with. If you're already in the middle of your counter... Not only can you do something like that, usually you could hit it... Actually, I've never hit it in between the hits like that before. Uh, but usually you'd hope for, if you were someone faster like Sceptiles, is to hit him and pierce his U-turn before he actually has the hitbox come out. You can also do something like that. But did he combo off that? I'm just screaming. Theoretically, side dashes can also help with this, but then he also just lands into it. This character... Oh my god, this character. But that is basically... You'd probably want to do a very quick move. Like this, like so, because he is very punishable if he does with the U-turn. Obviously, it's a freaking DP. Faster characters could probably also see ADC twice to make sure. Actually, no, he could do that too. That's nice. That's another good option if you want to do that. So there is counterplay to it, but staples are very annoying as a tool anyway, just because of how much space they cover. And just like you saw earlier, like how I just keep going into the, the other ones, like bum, 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 and that combo too. Yeah, it's just a lot of hits done, a lot of dumb stuff, but those are ways to beat it. You can shoot your own projectile from afar or counter like this, preemptively of course, 
where they can also do their own counter and move away or grab you. But it's still a very good option to do because they will do this up in your face because it can lead to a full confirm. And now we're here with the final boss. Of course, like with Mewtwo, his homing does have that OS thing I mentioned. But besides that, one of the moves he'll be using a lot is 6Y here. 6Y is very, very good because it covers, well, all this. And then he can use Miracle Eye to summon it like that. But with great power comes a great weakness. And, well, it's kind of hard to take advantage of this weakness for 6Y. It's the middle part here. Because this is a hit, as you can see. And then, of course, the, the pillar. With the safe space in the middle, if you're at the very edge of this and you think you know they're going to do it, you can do something like this and punish them for trying to do that. Now, it's more difficult than it sounds. It's not foolproof. They can always do other options, too, besides just spamming 6Y. Against certain characters, it's just hard to do in general because, like, Blastoise is bulky, so he can't really get out of the range of the pillar right away, nor does he, would he have a move. I mainly do this with Sceptile, but I'm showing Aegis last year to show that it's not just him because... 6x. <laughs> 6x. And you can see I'm mostly just hitting him before the Miracle Eye even happens, since I have it set to do the Miracle Eye. Because usually they would be able to react to the situation like, oh, he's coming at me. I should probably block or whatever and not do Miracle Eye. But in this case, I'm punishing the 6x itself. By the way, very cool tool to do. Uh, other subtiles, I guess, just say it real quick, do Leaf Blade because it is very busted and you get the Drain Synergy. But also, I guess if you're ready to slash, you get a free 6x, and that is also pretty busted, not gonna lie. Next thing I want to talk about, pretty simple. His counterattack is a very big move. You can't jump over it a lot of the time, even with Subtile, I have problems with doing it. Like, it's just a very big move, but it's also a mid-high. You can anti-air it. Pretty simple. I don't know how many people know this, that you can anti-air it. I don't really see it too much, I feel. But even I have trouble doing it, because I'm just used to jumping over counter-attacks. It's a very good option to have. The other thing I want to mention, though, for Shadow Mewtwo, which I guess technically has four things I, that is used to punish this character, if you count the Mewtwo homing thing. <laughs> I hate this character. No, I like Shadow Mewtwo. But another thing he'll commonly use in the corner is this, for example. This is very much a struggle, because if you block it, you can't really do anything, and that pierces. But this is a high. So you can probably expect what's going to happen. You got to be super, super on point for it, but it is something you can do, and usually they would save this for Oki. So it's not impossible to, like, react to the situation. It's just like you gotta time it after the slash right away. Otherwise, they get off the ground. Sceptile does have it a little easier because they can do Leaf Storm, and that's like a crit. And of course, other characters who have like air grabs, like maybe even Machamp. I know Electro Web will probably do it, but Machamp maybe too. I'm not too sure about that. But generally, every character who can duck it can reap the benefits of punishing him if they time it right. Blastoise, ironically, might have it easiest because he just counters through it and not having to avoid like a hit, which I find funny. <laughs> now, Sweet Coon. Admittedly, I had the hardest time doing this one because I don't know Suicune at all. <laughs> but the main thing I wanted to talk about for Suicune is obviously the mode move it uses the most is Counter Attack. Counter Attack is very tough because it can be used in various ways. It can be used for this. It can also just be used right away to do that. Or it can do part way through and then that. Now, the upwards angled one is always punishable on block. It's mainly used to hit people out of the air if they see them like jumping in. It's just like, oh, you're going in the air? What if I do that? Okay. But what if you're able to prevent him from realizing that you're going to go into the air. That is very useful. So like a situation where they go like this. In a perfect world like this, we would have someone like Sceptile who can just do something like this. And probably punish. I'm not, I'm too scared to do it though. <laughs> you could also probably just regular jump if you see it coming because they won't realize, oh, they're going to go for it. They can do the big risk, like I said, but if they just continue blocking, then it's kind of a risky thing for them to do. Good Suikins will also try to mix up with grabs, which are also really good to then just jump over to and punish. So it's super helpful to beat both the grab and the regular one, so long as it's not like a short charge one. But you know, most of the time they will charge it up and then either do the dash or then the attack. The only thing that makes it difficult to deal with is the upward one. And that will occasionally, you will get hit by it. It's just like, it's just an inevitability. You will get hit by that at some point. But yeah, general jump cancels like Sceptiles, Shadow Mewtwo's, Mewtwo's, Blaziken's will definitely help with dealing with the first hit. Though a lot of times Weakens will also try to just realize, oh, I hit them. Let me just do the immediate like upward angled one, which is less damage than if I do the full thing, but it's guaranteed. If anything, if you do get hit by the upward angled one, you're taking less damage because then you won't get crit. So I'm a nerd for this stuff. So you might as well just do it anyway. <laughs> In conclusion, jump. Use Suicune's ribbons as a jump rope and jump over it. Because, God, I hate this move so much. <laughs> and not gonna lie, guys, I kind of struggled with finding another thing for Suicune, because I don't know anything about Suicune. So just realize that Aurora Beam is very, very punishable. Like, God, it's so punishable. That was still a crit from far away. Leaf Blade is like 21 frames, if I recall. It's minus 28 for reference, by the way. And also just very reactable. So you can even just be like... Oh, cool. I reacted that. Jump. If you were finding difficulty with Suikun's Aurora Beam, 
and you did not realize it at this point, please punish it. <laughs> it's, a, it's a leaf storm situation, except I don't have a, th a second thing to talk about here because I'm stupid. I don't know what Sweet King's moveset is. Like, you would think I would think more about this, but nope. <laughs> and then we have our last character, which is a gremlin. So this is Weavow, a character with players who need to stop doing certain Oki options. Namely, this XX, because I can just jump over it like that if they mistime it which is very impressive because it definitely looked like it was totally gonna like be like on point hitting me there but if they do time it right you can just backdash it and it's gonna honestly be super hard for me to do it so just take my word for it like okay there we go there we go i got it but imagine me punishing it after i could just i'm just bad at it but yeah it's just a very awful oki and it's a there's another one that's very bad we have 5x here which was arguably easier to do than the other one. <laughs> it does stop from if you want to try jumping it like the other one is. But it's more awkward to use, I feel. I feel like 6x is maybe the better of the two bad options. I'm not too sure. But 6x is very telling for when you can jump it. And that one is just very easy compared to the other one for trying to backdash it. Because then we've all gets punished like that. You can see its arm glowing. It was still going through the uh, like recovery animation of it. So this is like a thing to just beat out the options. But I guess it's a tip to Weavile players. Do fake out. Or CA, please. Just do those two. They're very, very good. But I guess in response to that, for dealing with those moves, you're just going to have to take the block. Because if you try to backdash fake out, he's plus on whiff. I'm not even joking. <laughs> All right. Now that we've talked about Septile's dumb thing, what do we talk about this? <laughs> this is Taunt. It's a frame one counterattack, just like Septile. I didn't mention it. It's frame one, which is also why this is stupid. But what makes this also very stupid is that not only does it give you a debuff without even needing to get hit, which I mean, at least it's not the best debuff but only if you're in burst already which can actually happen a lot if you're like 100 cc like weavile but no what makes this move really dumb is the fact that he can do that you might think oh it's not that bad for those who don't know well actually it's terrible for the entirety he's holding his knife fingers out he is invulnerable and he's never vulnerable during it because he can return to it like that and guess what blah, blah, blah. when he returns he's invulnerable and there's no frames in between to when he can get hit by it this is my complaining talking about taunt again from the t stupid counter video i made earlier but basically how you want to deal with this move if anything is being in the air very is very helpful he can't really do much except for maybe if he wants to cancel into knockoff but that is very risky on his part because you could also just like jump over him like this and he's in an awkward position of course characters with high air maneuverability like septiles or who can delay it are much better throwing multiple attacks out during it too because you're like oh i'll hit his block at least actually no you just hit his taunt again because he could keep doing it over and over again in those situations so you want to make sure you can at least get out of the way and if he does end up going for if he does end up going for this you know i'm trying to record a video here but at the very least when he does a slash he can still be hit like that so that's very good and i think even when he's coming back like yeah when he's doing that too so it's not like he's invulnerable that the, the slashing part but everything else doesn't become invulnerable so if you want to go for the multi-attack method and risk double taunts be my guest i'm not doing that i'm gonna be staying in the air the entire time and waiting for him to either whiff or i can get some breathing room that's just how you kind of have to deal with taunt because taunt is really dumb piercing moves and predicting it is obviously an entirely separate thing in general but it is a very good tool for him to use so he'll probably be using a lot that mostly deal with projectiles and then another thing, because I hate this gremlin, is that here's some ways to beat out some of his Y moves. For example, he likes to use this move a lot. I normally see this move be used plenty of times at the beginning of a round because it sets up a lot of traps very easily. Thing is though, characters with fast projectiles or fast homing attacks are going to be able to punish him like that. So always keep that in mind. And in worst case scenario, if he doesn't do it, you can obviously just do that. Or you can just, you know, have your projectiles out to pressure him either way. And then another Y move I want to mention is actually a very good move that I feel like is very underrated is back Y. His back Y is a very high hitting attack, but it does a recoil effect if hit on block. And while he can move out of this and do stuff like Azicle Crash or the Airdrop, as you see right there, some characters have very high hitting moves like Subtile's forward Y, or in this case, I'm testing to see if Decidueye's back Y can do it. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Back Y could work for him too. But yeah, very good to find your option. It's very hard though, especially with Icicle Crash though. And that's why I'm kind of like talking about this very specific thing till the very end because it's just like only certain characters. But you know what? It's incredibly useful. And I just want to thank every single one of you for possibly making through this hour long video. Maybe. I don't know. I've been here for three hours recording. <laughs> but yes, I hope you all enjoyed the video. Uh, it's very long. I thought it was going to be shorter, but I hope you all learned something new. Some of it was obviously very common knowledge. Some of it was very niche knowledge. Some of it was in between, but I covered all my bases kind of. I hit my mic, but yes. Thank you guys so much for coming by. Hope you all have a great rest of your days and love y'all. See you guys next time.